This video is brought to you by Design to Flutter, the platform to improve your Flutter coding skills by building real projects. At the end of this video, you will be able to create the user statistics or stats of the social media profile screen user interface, but you will be able to make it responsive to another mobile phone screen size. So let's get started. When a designer hands you the mock-up design for a mobile app, usually there is only one phone screen size throughout the whole design file, whether it is from Figma, Envision, or Sketch. However, there are millions, okay, maybe not millions, but many thousands of different phone screen sizes, aspect ratio, and screen types. Therefore, how do you be pixel perfect for different phone screens? Well, we are going to use this thing called scale. So scale is a simple way to make your user interface smaller or bigger. Therefore, in this video, in the first part, we are going to go through on how to create a user stats part of the app. And the second part is how we are going to use the scale to make the app responsive to different phone screen sizes. If you want to follow along, you can go to the Design to Flutter subreddit and head down to this challenge and download the starter project. So once downloaded, let's get started with this tutorial. First, you need to download the latest version of the Pixel Perfect Package. It's a tool that allows us to compare original mockup with our current design. So the next thing is we're going to add the save area. So the save area basically adds spacing according to the phone screen. So for this is an iPhone 11 Pro. So it adds a spacing at the top, which is highlighted in blue, and spacing at the bottom, which is also highlighted at blue. So the next thing is we are going to add the padding. So the padding allows us to make the app much more pleasing to the eyes. Next thing is we're going to add the scaffold, which is basically the structure of the whole app. And lastly, we will need to add a column because at the first part of this whole app, it is arranged in a column from top to bottom. And for this column, it is aligned to the left which makes the cross axis alignment to the left or to the start. So let's add all of this code in our starter project. Also, at the same time, we want to wrap our save area with a pixel perfect widget that has our asset path and it has the image path with the mockup picture as the background. And then we will have our safe area, our padding, our scaffold, and our column with our cross axis alignment to the start. And at the same time, we will add in the children parameter. So like we mentioned earlier, we are only going to build this user statistics with the avatar and the different statistics like your post, follower, and following statistic. Since we are not doing this top header where we will see the username and the different icon buttons, which has already been done in the previous video, we are going to measure the distance from the status bar to the avatar. And if you were to look closely, it requires a sized box of the height of 49, basically a spacing. So let's add that. So inside our column, we will add a sized box of a height of 40. The next thing is we're going to add a row with the children and the image assets of the avatar as such. So now you can see that inside our user statistics part, you can see that the avatar is placed very snugly in our pixel perfect over here. So if you were to scroll to the left and to the right, you could see that the image is perfect as where it is right now. So let's go move on to the next few things which are the different statistics. So instead of hard coding the text widgets, we are going to create a user stats object with the different fields as the value and the name. So the value represents the number that's on top over here and the name represents the text that's just below the number as such. Then we are going to create a list of user statistics. So we are just going to hard code this as such 
and why I'm creating an object rather than a map of the different user statistics. So in the future, if we were to pull this from an API, then we can just make use of the user object and it will become much cleaner and much more maintainable for the code base. Now, if we were to go back to the Figma file and you could see there are different spacing. So from the avatar image to the first user statistic, it requires 41 pixels. From the first statistic to the second one, it requires 40 and then second one to the third one, it requires 27. So I'm going to add these different spacing into our user stats object. But before that, we are going to add another field inside our user stats, which is called the left padding factor. We're going to scale it up to make it responsive. And since this is a required, we need the left padding factor in all of our different user stats objects. So let's add in accordingly. And now it looks something like this. So let's break down the widgets for each of the user stats. So each user stats have a row. And then inside the row for one user statistic, we will have a sized box. And then we will have a column. And inside this column, we will have basically two text widgets. However, how are we able to loop this user statistic three times efficiently? Well, we can use this thing called the spread operator. So what this spread operator does is basically it spreads or takes out the elements inside the list or iterable. So for example, we will have to make use of this for in loop in order for us to loop through, for example, in these three things. If we were to manually do it, it will look something like this where every single widget has been spread out with the individual things that they have. For example, these two widgets reference from the first thing, this second two widgets reference the second things, and the last two widgets reference the third thing. So this essentially is the same as this for in loop, where it will just loop through the three things, and then it will add the things according to the different widgets. And then using this, we are able to just make these two widgets spread it across this list of children, which eventually will look something like this. So let's do that inside our row of user statistics. So inside our row, which have our avatar image, we are going to add in a for in loop for our user statistics. Then we are going to make use of the spread operator and this requires a list. And now inside this list, we are going to first add in the spacing, which is basically a sized box. And then we are going to reference it from the stats user object and the left padding factor. And now we will add in the column. Inside our column, we will have a list of text. And basically for our value, since it's an integer, we will convert it into a string. And then for our text style, it will be a bold with a font size of 16.5. And then for our text over here, we will just have a font size of 14. And if you were to save this, you could see that the text is very close to pixel perfect. So we need to change accordingly. So if we were to go down to our list of user stats and change our second user stats left padding factor to 39 and our last user stats left padding factor to 24. And you could see that now we have almost pixel perfect text that is rendered according to the mockup social media profile screen or basically the user statistic part of it. All right, great. But is this the end? Well, that's not usually the case. So if you were to run it in another phone, you could see that I have opened up the iPhone 11 Pro Max and Wow, it actually is pixel perfect inside the iPhone 11. No, 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 there is unnecessary spacing over here. So what we can do is, if we were to scroll all the way up to our profile screen widget over here in our pixel perfect, we need to change our iPhone 11 Pro Max scale factor. So what we can do is, we can just put our iPhone 11 Pro Max as such. And now we're going to add in the scale. But the thing is, how are we going to calculate the scale according to the iPhone 11 Pro Max of the Pixel Perfect? Basically, we want to size our mock-up according to the iPhone 11 Pro Max. So what we can do is, we can go to the Figma file over here and let's calculate what is the 
height and the width of this mock-up. So the width is 375 while the height is 812. So let's create a variable according to that. So right just below our constants variables with the icons path and image path, let's create a mock-up height and a mock-up width. Now the next thing is we need to get the width of the current iPhone screen. So we're going to make use of media query. So right under our profile build method, we are going to add in this media query that reference to the size of the width. The next thing is we're going to create a scale variable that basically takes in the mockup width divided by the current phone screen width. This gives us a decimal or you could say a percentage of how the image should actually look like. Now we can just put in this variable scale inside our pixel perfect scale over here. And if you were to save this and you could see that for our iPhone 11 Pro Max, now our design is not responsive accordingly. So if you were to hide over here, there's actually a lot of spacing on the right. And if you were to just scroll all the way to the right, you could see that mockup is actually fitted nicely, but our current implementation is not. So the first thing is we want to scale our avatar image. So guess what? The image actually has a scale parameter. So let's go to our row over here, and then we're going to add in a scale. Just add in a scale as such and save this. You could see now that our image over here is scaled up accordingly and nicely as well. So if we were to move our image as such, you could see that it is perfectly aligned to our image over here. So as you can see over here, our avatar image is scaled very nicely according to the scale that we have calculated. The next thing is we want to change our hard-coded left padding into something that is more responsive. So we're going to take a percentage and multiply it to the width of the current phone screen. So how we're going to implement it is inside our sized box over here, our left padding factor is according to the mockup width inside our Figma file. So we're going to grab a percentage, meaning that we're going to divide the mockup width, and then we're going to multiply it to the current width of the phone screen. And now if we were to save this, you could see that now the spacing in between the user statistic is a little bit more accurate. Lastly, we want to scale our text as well. So lucky for you, inside the text widget, there is this text scale factor. But this text scale factor is different from the image scale factor. So what they need is the number of font pixels for each logical pixel. So this has to be a number more than one. So what we can do is, instead of the scale which sizes the image, we will have to create another variable that is called the text scale factor which calculates the current width and divided by the mockup width. Now we can add our text scale factor inside our text scale factor parameter in our text widget. And we're going to do the same for our stats value and the stats name. So let's add in our stats name text widget. And now if we were to save this, let's see how it looks like. Great! It looks like it's very close to our mockup over here. So we're going to change the left padding factor inside our user stats object. Both of the iPhone 11 Pro and the iPhone 11 Pro Max are having a pixel perfect moment. So our user stats over here, it's not exactly 99% pixel perfect, but it's almost there. And inside our iPhone 11 Pro, you could see that it is actually very close to perfect. So in summary, we learned how to create a user profile stats section using the different layouts and rows and whatnot. We also learned how to calculate the scale for images, not only for our avatar image, but also for our pixel perfect image in order for us to make it look nice. And then we learned how to calculate the responsive spacing as well, basically using a percentage from the mockup width according to the width inside our Figma file and multiplying to the current phone screen width. And lastly, we calculate the text scale factor for the text widget size that allows us to 
make it bigger according to the phone screen or make it smaller according to the phone screen. That's about it. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want more of this video, subscribe down below and comment down if you have any best practices for responsiveness in different mobile screens. Stay safe and all the best. Bye-bye.